Welcome to the um, third episode of the Outside Our Walls podcast. I have with me um, someone that's been, uh, I think, a recent friend, but I would count him, I would count him as a friend. Acquaintance maybe would be better, but but I we're brothers in the Lord, and I I find that to be a joy. So um, this is Joel Barnes. Joel is a um, artist, uh, musical artist, a songwriter. Um, he's working on his own album. He's also performed with Maverick City Music, and um, and I wanted you all to get to know him a little bit. So Joel, welcome yeah, to the man. podcast. Thanks oh, for man. being Thank here, you man. For me. Yes, yeah, sir. It's, Thank you for having it's, me. It's good to have you, man. You're coming to us at this point from Kentucky, but you live in Atlanta. Yes, um, sir. Okay. And that's where Maverick City is headquartered, right? Is that Atlanta? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself, man. How old are you? Where are you from? How'd you, you know, just even like, how'd you get into singing? Did you grow up singing? Is that new? What, how'd you, how do you think about that stuff? I'm, I'm 25. Um, I'm born and raised in Kentucky, man. Hopkins, Hill, Kentucky. I was born and raised and bred, man. True and true, like through and through, man. Um, been singing all my life, I think, like since high chair days. Like I've been humming the Barney melody since I was a baby, but I couldn't talk too much. Um, um, always been a fan of music. Always been in love with music. Um, all different styles, all different genres. Um, my mom like carried me to church from birth until now. Like every time I'm in town, I was trying to make fun of going to church somewhere. So, yeah, man. Um, love basketball. Love music. Love the Lord. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch the Did you watch the Last Chance documentary? Did you watch the Jordan documentary? Oh man. Yeah, I've been watching it like piece by piece. I have to take it in small doses because it's a lot. Yeah. But it's good. It's a lot. It, the last it's a dance lot. is amazing. Yeah, yeah. He was pretty – Michael Jordan was pretty good. He was mm -hmm. a decent basketball player, so. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, so. So how long have you been writing songs? You, um, I was just t telling you a second ago that I saw a song, something you were performed on or wrote in 2016. Is that probably where you got into actually writing for people and thinking through songwriting, or was it long before that? Um, I wrote my first song at 16 and it wasn't any good, but uh, <laughs> I definitely like, I think like my first introduction to songwriting was like a lot of like long car rides between like here in Kentucky and Atlanta. My brother would um, take me to a lot of his studio sessions in Atlanta. So he would drive and while we were driving, he would ask me about song lyrics and ask me about different things and like what sounds better, what feels better. So I think that was my introduction to songwriting, but I sat down and wrote my first song at 16. But, you know, I, I've been, like, figuring out, like, songwriting, like, like here and there between, like, 16 and 18, like, writing for myself or, like, just writing with my brother and all of that. But I got into writing for other people, yeah, in about, like, 2015, 2016, while we were, like, thinking to, through Dante's first album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and Dante has performed on a number, on a couple Maverick City albums, too, right? So if mm -hmm. people are listening mm -hmm. to Mav mav city they'll, they'll know him happen. yeah yeah and his and the one and one of his tunes that he sang on is so good man um uh what's the name of it uh Real thing? take me what's back it? Real take, thing oh, take take back. take take me back man i that song is so good i was driving somewhere nuts to go listen to it and just pondering the the realities of that tune just an honest such an honest song love it Love it, and his yeah. voice is kill killer too. His oh, voice yeah. is so good. Yeah, I was at I, when when we were at the mat, when we were at the, the songwriting camp. If everybody doesn't know, I was at the songwriting camp with um, with Maverick City uh, group of people a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. And um, dude, I mean, I don't I don't think I have a great voice, but dude, I was by far the worst singer of everybody I heard sing. It was just everybody can sing, like everybody Not in sure. that on that group can sing bro like it's it's really yeah. good dude this is so yeah. good um it's amazing well, being surrounded by creative yeah yeah man and i and i feel like even musically um the people that that i was listening to play play their instruments um even if even when you listen to the maverick city um arrangements they're just so tastefully done mm -hmm. so much space um so many hooks it's just really well done. Who who arranges all that stuff? Is that Tony? Who, um, who's doing a lot of that? A lot of the arrangements are actually like done with like the musicians, like they talk about themselves. Like, like Tony just gives musicians free will to like figure it out. And Aaron plays keys, so Aaron Moses plays keys, so he does a lot of the arrangements. Tim Reddick 
uh, Chandler, like a lot of the maps and people are really involved in, especially when the songs that, that they're singing. So any of the people that are like singing songs on the map, um, they're, if they're a musician, they're really involved. And they're like, okay. hey, let's do this. Hey, I was feeling this. And we, we arrange and we like we finish the lyrics and stuff up until the point that we record it. So like no song is done until it's recorded. In, in until our it's so, done. Like, we literally change stuff about promises until the very last like, minute. time that we record the last minute. So, but that's just how we do all of our songs. Like, that's the best songwriters, man. Best songwriters are never content until it's printed. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've written a couple songs and I think the best one took me about 10 months to get the lyrics right. And um, it was co-written, but it's just, you, know, you just work, 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 work mm -hmm. to try and, to try and finish it. How, how, what's the connection? What's the connection between Tony? What's Tony's last name? Um, Brown. Um, yeah. Tony Brown. What's his connection? Is there a connection there to Bethel or is it connection to so, House Fires? Uh, what's the connection? Tony and Nate are part of House Fires. Yeah. They are, uh, they are part of House Fires. Um, um, Tony, Nate, and Kirby, and them, they are part of House Fires. Um, I think Bethel signed Maverick City as a company under them. So like okay. Maverick City is signed to Bethel as a company. Got yeah. it. And is that where Tribal's, because the Tribal is a... Um, yeah. It's yeah. a I think Tribal's a, part of, a, a partner of um, Maverick City as well, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, it's hard to find them all together because they're all linked in mm -hmm. so many different ways. Um, mm -hmm. Let me talk to you about Promises. So Promises is um, a song that you co-wrote, right? Mm -hmm. And you sang on for Maverick City. And I'm just yeah. gonna tell you, if, if just to everybody, everybody listening, um, if you haven't listened to Promises, go on YouTube. Um, there's over 3 million views as of today, um, which is incredible, bro. Like that's crazy. incredible. Yeah, it's, it's incredible, man. Like I just think it's really, really, really well done. Um, but such a good song. Um, and I've heard from I've heard from a number of people just as they're listening to it, even in even in this season of uncertainty, how helpful it is for them and how helpful it just to even ponder some of the truths in that. Um, tell me a little bit about as you thought about that song promises. And if you haven't heard it, if you're listening to this podcast, you it, just pause the podcast, especially if you're listening on Spotify, easy to jump over, take a listen to, to promises from Maverick City Music and um, and you'll hear Joel Joel singing on it. Um, do a great oh job, God. by the way. Great voice I on that. Appreciate it, man. Um, but but tell me tell me about just <clears throat> how that song came about, how you you know why you decided to write it, um, what it was about, just even that idea of the God of the faithfulness of God, to um, to just what was it about that, that that prompted you to write that tune? Um, so I think that like when I when I came to the mat to the camp, the idea of like like wanting to like chase it. And then I sat down with like Carrington and then Well and um, Kayla. Like my perspective at the time was like, God, I'm just so ready to see the promises that you made me. I think we all have like prophecies and promises and things that God has spoken to us and is, has given us and entrusted us with. And a lot of times we expect to walk outside the day after the promise is given to us and there's a fully grown tree of promise and that's just not how things work. Like it's, it comes with seasons with the Lord. And I think that I was really becoming discouraged in that season of my life. Like, God, I'm not seeing anything. And then God just was looking at me like, you can't allow what you see in front of you to cause you to doubt what I said to you. So I decided, we all, when we talked about it, we just decided to write a song that would encourage us or, or like keep us in the song that would just, that we would want to hear in this season. In the song that we would want to like hold, like would carry us over and hold us in the times that we do get weary, in the times that we do get like restless or impatient in the waiting. And the best way to even do that is, is to remember that God is faithful. He's been faithful. He's never like ever failed us once. You know, storms come, winds blow, like waves of life come crashing down. Like I want to be anchored in the fact that you are good and you're going to remain good through the ages. So, yeah. and there's not one word that comes from God's mouth that isn't, that doesn't have the ability to, to work itself out in the moment that it's spoken. So. We just decided to sit down and like write a song that would carry us over. That's good. Yeah, your first, I mean, your first thing you, you sing in the whole tune, you haven't even started the song yet, but you just sing Faithful Through the Ages. Um, and uh, I think that sets up the song so well um, in the, you know, as you're just, as you're just even as a listener, you know, you go, okay, Faithful Through the Ages. And then you walk through that, 
talking about Abraham, mm-hmm. you know, God of Abraham, and you walk through it. Mm-hmm. And just even, I mean, it, it's, it's similar. Do you guys pull, um, you know, pull some ideas from other tunes? Like, I, not, not, but we all, you know, the best, the best songs are some mm-hmm. of the ones that you listen to. But like, I think when I listen to that sometimes, I'm like, man, this is another tune similar to like, Great is Your Faithfulness you know, the mm. sun rises, the, you know, all mm. those like seasons come and go, it never changes. Mm. Um, how, how do you write songs like that? I mean, are you thinking, yeah, I'm going to, I just, that's a great song. I'm going to pull some of, you know, just see even just some of the categories or is it just, was that just off your, off your head? How are you thinking through those things as you're writing? Um, I think we just, I think that like, when it comes to like, like songwriting, I think I'm, for the most of us, we try to be students of our craft. And I think like you have to like kind of in a sense, build a well, like, yeah, you build a well with just different content, like songs you listen to, scriptures that you read, like revelations that you like, that you discover with the Lord. Like a lot of that stuff like goes into building a well. And I think in the moments of writing or creating or spontaneous worship or prophetic worship, like as you're in tune with the spirit and you're listening for the whisper, there are things that you draw from the well and what comes out of the well is what comes out. So I think in that, in that moment, we was just drawing from the well and that's what came out. And I think, the faith through the ages thing for me, it puts this almost ancient stamp on it. Like this is something that was before me and this is something that's gonna outlive me. Like you're faithful. You were faithful before I was ever thought of or imagined on the earth. And you're gonna be faithful even long after I'm gone. You were faithful with my ancestors, with the people that came before me, and you'll be faithful with my grandchildren and my great grandchildren. Like it's going to it's going to continue on. So I think that's why I was so like like bent on saying like and making sure that we did we um emphasize that he's faithful through the ages mm. that's good man well i think it comes through i think you did a really good job with it thanks for writing that song and i'm sure that there's other yeah, songs too that you've did you write other songs on that on that album or was that the main um, one that you kind of contributed to on on part two that's coming out whenever there's a song called be praised that i wrote okay cool i'm looking mm-hmm. forward to it I am looking yeah, forward yeah. to it. It was fun for me being a part of, I, I just wanted to try and, but, you know, I've written songs with certain groups of people in the past and whether I'm, you know, playing in bands when I was younger or with, you know, worship albums or whatever, but man, I just, I really benefited from, from, from Maverick city. P- part of it is there's a community there. That's just great. I mean, oh, Maverick yeah. city has got a, got a great community of people. Um, seems like everybody really cares about each other. And, um, it's just been fun. It was fun to see. It was fun to be around. So I'm hopefully oh, I can yeah. do it again. Hopefully I have oh, time sure. to, to jump, jump in and do it again. I, I, um, I want to make sure I do that. So hopefully I yeah, can do that. Yeah, for soon. sure. I wish this COVID thing would lift so that you guys could come and, and see it in person, man. It's, it's electrifying. It's, it's inspiring. It's encouraging. It's uplifting. And it's, it's unmatched. Like the culture, yeah. or like being like letting God breathe on the moment. Like it's, it's really special. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that actually leads me to another song, which I, cause I would love to be a part of it. And I don't know how much of the, you know, the recordings, the recording I know is separate, but just even getting together with everybody, I'm assuming there's some of the worship times together where we're all, you guys are singing songs, you're doing song shares, songs that mm-hmm. you've written or whatever, everybody's singing. But, but, you know, one of the things that I think can be, can be at least different for people with, with Maverick City albums is the length of song. I mean, almost, oh, almost yeah. just famously, if it's not 10 minutes, then it's something's wrong. Like that's kind of the way that it seems like, which, yeah, which is, it took me a little bit to get, but I love it now that I'm like, man, this is, <clears throat> there's a vibe that is just great. What is it? I mean, I've, as you thought through that process, and you've written songs, um, how much of that time space, I mean, you have the song itself, how much of that is spontaneous? How much of that is planned in terms of the song length? The, you know, the, some of the singing later on, is that, is that, is that done intentionally? Is that, uh, you know, a cultural dynamic? Is that more just because everybody's wanting it to be more of a, of a, an experience, you know, with songs like a, mm-hmm. we want it to be a worship experience. And so we're mm-hmm. playing off of each other. Just give me some insight into that. What's, what's happening, what's happening with the arrangements on the, on the albums? I think that um, we, of course, like, like for me, like what, what I was, what I was talking about, my mentors and my leaders in worship, and honestly, and it's it's interesting because it's, it's just become the culture of Mav City. Like, we honestly have a structure, but then we give God room to move. Like, he can totally wreck our structure, or it can look different. So, like, we can go through the song, like, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, chorus, chorus. But 
we give God room to move and we like, we kind of, I don't know if we listen to the whisper and sometimes we like flutter or we just take our time like to just have moments. But the moments that you guys see the 10 minutes is really from like a 20 to 30 minute moment. We condense it down to the 10 minute spot. Like, like it's really like 20 to 30 minutes because we give God room to move and we just go for it. It's like, it's just the fact that we're going for broke. We are all one, we are all one worship team. Everybody, not just people behind the mic, but everybody in the room, we're all one worship team, leading worship to the audience of one, which is God alone. And we just so happen to turn the cameras on and, and like let people see into the room or into the space that we're just going after. Um, that's just, I think that's just the culture of Magic City. Like, we just want to go after God with everything we got. So I think that's why I think it gets super lengthy because sometimes we don't want to let moments go. It's just like this thing is getting good. We get to sing songs and lead worship to the audience of one, and he's worthy of every last bit of it. Mm, that's good. Yeah, I think that that's I think that's something that that we can learn because I think that there's something about waiting and sitting in music. I think one of the things that um, there's like there's like different sides to musical I- ideologies. I think some are like the old hymns, you know, mm-hmm. that are that are four stanzas, and you just fly through them no repetition, no waiting, really hardly any musical space. That's not right. That's not right or wrong. That's just, that was just a way to do it. And then there's another mm-hmm. side that would say, um, Hey, just wait. And re- a lot of repetitions good. Like you can repeat things over and over again and just mm-hmm. almost, almost in a way to just um, f- remind yourself of what's true um, mm-hmm. in repetition. So one is remind yourself of what's true and almost you know, I think about, I think about some old hymns that are like, which is more my background where I grew up, but where it's mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, we want to rehearse in the song, the gospel from beginning to end in every song. So you're like, mm-hmm. all right, we're going to go from sin to redemption to consummation mm-hmm. in every single song, um, which again, isn't right or wrong. And then you have <clears throat> Mav, Mav City that's true. And then let's just sit and wait and linger and maybe repeat and listen to the leader, whoever's leading it and, and follow their lead, which mm-hmm. isn't right or wrong. I think we can make it right or wrong though, which is a problem. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that we can, we can take those and make those as being, um, it's like a, it's like a, a, a moral issue. Like if you repeat yeah. too many songs, like I've talked to so many people are like repetition's bad. Like if I'm repeating songs, then we're not actually singing anything or the other way, if we're singing lots of truth and other things, how do you think about that? Like, how, cause I love, I love that it's so unique. Um, how do you think about that in music? What's your, what's your thinking on those kinds of things? I mean, I think that, you know, of course it has to be biblically sound and theologically sound, but I think that there's no right or wrong way of doing it. I think you just have to like, excuse me, follow the wind. One thing that I've learned in the worship leading and in any of those settings is I follow the wind. If the wind's not blowing, then I'm not moving and I'll wait. But wherever the wind is fall blowing, wherever like the river is flowing, I follow that direction. I don't kick against it or I don't try to like force anything to happen. I just let God go where he wants to go because he knows where he wants to go. Like he knows what he wants to hear. So wherever it's like he's whatever moment he's breathing on, we're gonna stay there until the wind blows another direction. There is no right or wrong in this thing, like because God's presence is not that fragile. It's just not like it's just not that fragile. So like I think that we just have to like listen for the whisper follow the wind and you know i say flutter because the eagles flutter when they are like waiting on the wind they sit there and they flutter and they wait until the wind can because they don't you ever you never you really ever see your eagle flap its wings like that it literally like follows the current it follows the wind while the like smaller birds like robins they flap and flap and flap and flap because they're trying to like but in this thing we're just gonna like wait on the wind and then soar wherever the wind is taking us so yeah that's good man that's what i think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's, I think as, I think as we sing songs, like we want to start with truth and mm-hmm. then truth leads us into deeper truth or deeper understandings. And we can just express emotions mm-hmm. to the Lord as we go forward. And that's good. Yeah. But one of the things that, one of the things that Maverick city said um, on their website is um, Maverick city started with the dream to make space for folk that would otherwise live in their own separate worlds to break the unspoken rules that exist in the Christian music industry and gospel world. But I think more importantly to be a megaphone for a community of creatives that have been pushed to the margins of the industry of church music. I think that's, I think that's good. That's a very clear <coughs> direction for Maverick city music. Mm-hmm. Um, 
what does Maverick City Music mean, meant to you? Like, as you've thought about it and gotten involved with them, do you find that it's just a space for creatives that love Jesus to just express that? Like, how have you thought about Maverick City? Absolutely. I think it's a space for creatives to, like, really, like, just love Jesus together in a, in a safe community, in a, in a space where people understand. They don't, like, you know what I mean? Like, they're, but beyond, like, denominational barriers, beyond background, beyond, like, different, um, like belief systems or different theologies beyond like just all of the things that would that would normally separate us like it's a space that is free it is a space that is like welcome to anyone that wants to love god and regardless of like where you come from it's just we're going to get in here we're going to go after the, the same jesus and i love that environment there's no there's no egos there's no um things that would normally try to separate us well you guys don't believe this so i'm just trying to separate it's just like it's more so like no, we all love the same Jesus. It doesn't make a difference where we come from. Yeah, that's good. Go and I've, which creates which creates a sense of diversity, both probably in in beliefs. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. everybody's orthodox, um, but mm-hmm. within belief, yeah. um, and also and also within cultures and backgrounds and songwriting styles. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there is a diversity in in Mav City that I think oh, yeah, comes through. What, what is that? How do you think about that? Like from a musical perspective, how has that helped just to shape even the music, like in the diversity of, oh, the of writers? I mean, as on the, on the practical end of things of like, just like the diversity helped in the music, I think that all different styles of music should be celebrated and not separate. I think like all the different things, like add different, like uh, this, like, almost like a big pot of gumbo like it's it's all different things but as you put them together it makes this amazing new like feel this new like taste this new sound and it's it's really beautiful because like i come from a place where it's just like straight pentecostal gospel but then someone else comes from a place where it's been it's very baptist or someone else comes from like methodist or whatever and like we come from the different styles and different genres it might like sound folky or it might sound very popish it might sound really like worship culture or not sound really like gospel but whatever it is like all of it coming together makes this amazing like sandwich of different things adding together and it's just it's good like it's good to my soul like the way it feels it's like this feels good even though the, that was a very like churchy like core right here i feel this very ccm core over here or i feel this very like folky vibe in this section of the song but it all makes this amazing like body of art and it's it's just good to my soul man so yeah i love yeah, that's that that's good. I I think saying it like it's gumbo is a really good way to think about it. I never mm. thought about that, but that's true. That's true. It's a nice and it, and you can, you can tell in the music because it doesn't yeah. all sound the same. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been fun to just get to know get to know the music some and listen and find some find the diversity refreshing. Um, it's so different. You got songs yeah. like Promises that's very like six eight and just like very worshipful. But then you have songs like Come On In. Take a seat, I may run for you and me. Never leave, oh Jesus, stay with me. Like it's just, oh, yeah, it just feels yeah, good. yeah. Like loving on Jesus. Oh, yeah, man, it's amazing. It's an amazing, like I said, part of Dumbo. What else you want to sing for us, man? <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love hearing yeah. you sing the great voice. Um, it's been, it's been, it's been fun, and I'm, I'm looking forward to more albums coming out, and um. I'm looking forward to benefiting from from you guys. Hopefully, I can jump into some more songwriting oh, camps with you all. Do it. Let's do it. What would you? What thoughts would you have for songwriters? Like maybe there's someone listening to this that's tr- thinking through. Hey, you know, I, I write songs, but how do I? How should I approach songwriting? Maybe even someone that's more of an accomplished songwriter that would love to get involved with Maverick City. How? Wh- what direction would you point people in? Give me. Give us this. Give me one thing that you tell a, a new songwriter to do. So one thing that from your experience, like this is the best thing that I think you can do as a songwriter. And two, how could people get involved in Maverick City Music if they're wanting to think through songwriting and benefit from you guys? For a new songwriter, I would say be a student of the craft. I would say study songs, not just the songs that you write, but all different styles. Study um, rock songs, like the, the way that they're structured, the way that they're written, like the, the word choices. Study pop songs, study R&B songs, country, folk, um, reggae, uh, Afrobeat, study uh, CCM, gospel, like study the different facets of music, all of the different genres, so that you have, like you, like I said earlier, building a well of content, because then you'll have a, a good, solid well to draw from in any song that you get, and any, like, let it, like, 
be a student of the craft. I would say always be a student. As a songwriter, always be a student. As a worship leader, always be a student. Always be willing to be teachable and willing to learn. If you see something or you feel something different, like celebrate it and like ask questions like, well, what is this and how does that work? And why does it go this way? What's the difference between pop and R&B? What's the difference between the CCM culture and the gospel culture? What's the difference between this, that, and the and, and learn how to celebrate each individual genre. Um, that's what I would give a new songwriter, studying lyrics, studying the structure and all that. For people that wanted to get involved in Maverick City, man, I would say reach out to Tony Brown. I would say uh, join a lot of the camps. I mean, they're open to, to anybody when they when you can all sign up. Um, once you're in the culture, you're in the culture. So, like, and it's open to anybody that wants to join. So I think, you know, reach out. Reach out to one of the people that you see in Maverick uh, City and ask them. We can all point you in the same direction. So I'll say you can reach out to Tony, reach out to him, myself, reach out to anybody that's already in the Mac camp and we'll navigate you and point you in the right direction. Yeah, man, it's open to anybody. Yeah, that's good. I found um, for, pe- for anybody listening from, from Anchor Church, uh, you know, I, we, um, Joel was super encouraging for me. So at the, at the camp, just, um, just been just really encouraging. And I found it, I found it to be an easy, an easy group of people to um, jump into. And because mm-hmm. everybody's welcoming, if everybody's humble. Um, so even jumping into song, songwriting groups, like people are eager to just write a good song and that, you know, if it's their idea, great. If it's not great, like let's just write something good. So mm-hmm. thank you for, thank you for being encouraging to me. I know I wrote you a note saying that afterwards, but it was super encouraging. man. So thank you for doing that. Um, how can we hear more from you, man? Where can we find you online? Uh, where can we, where can we listen to more music from, from you? Um, I'm on Instagram at I am Joe underscore L. Um, I'm on Facebook with Joe space L space Barnes. Um, I have content that like is out with Eddie James and with Dante and stuff. So you can find that stuff on YouTube. I am working on the album right now. So hopefully soon I'll at least drop a single and not an in, in, entire EP like sooner or later. So we will have more content coming out very soon. So we'll just wait on the way and waiting on the list. Good, man. Well, I appreciate you jumping in with us. Thank you for being a part of this podcast. It really oh, is man, a, a way to serve us. And you just, you do, you have. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for writing the songs that yes, so point our eyes to Jesus. And yes. Um, yes, yeah, yes, and they yes. can just continue to help us to push forward that way. So I'm grateful for you, man. Thank you. I love you, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. So this is the third, um, this is the third installment of the Outside the Wall, Outside Our Walls podcast. Please listen, check out the other ones uh, that we have. We're eager to, um, to continue to press forward, to move forward. Everybody else, we'll, we'll uh, talk to you hopefully next time and uh, have a great day. See ya.